name is Matthew Armstrong with Shape Change Media. Check us out at shapechange.org. This is a review of the Razor 300S electric scooter. <laughs> By the way, don't you love that lovely slow-mo? Look at that buttery slow-mo. Lovely. You know you love it. That's the Panasonic GH4, 96 frames per second. I got links to all this stuff below. First of all, out of all the gifts I've ever gotten my kids, this is probably the most enjoyable gift they have ever received. It's like giving them a type of responsibility and freedom. They glow on these things. They love, 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 love it. Lily, after the very first time she rode one of these, which she's a little timid for at some things, she really took to it. And that night, she did not want to take off her helmet. She wore it throughout the house. When I go to put her in bed, she is wearing the helmet in bed. I kid you not. I'm like, Lily, what are you doing? She's like, I think you'll sleep better without the helmet on your head. But I want to be ready. <laughs> yes, the kids love them. Now, you gotta know, they're pretty fast. They go up to 15 miles per hour. These things have quite a bit of power. In fact, they have power enough to not only ride on pavement and the road, but they can off-road. That's one of the things I love about them. And it means that the kids are able to explore. For example, our front yard is, is this awesome park across the street from our apartments. They can go all over that park on these things. Ride time. Ride time's about 45 minutes to an hour, depending on your size and how you use them. Uh, we found that by the end of the, while the battery was getting low, if you actually just got off of them for a little while, they got more of their charge back. I don't know why that works like it does, but it does. And um, so they were able to ride them longer. These things do require 8 to 12 hours to charge, to fully charge. Uh, I think 12 hours is good, so before they go to bed, plug in the charger. By the next morning, you're ready to go. And uh, it does have a handbrake. If you squeeze it too tight, you will lock up the back wheel and, and skid. So the brake works really well. I had to explain that to my, my son because, you know, there's just something cool about skidding until you realize you're ruining your tires. Okay, another thing. It's good to know that for the money you're spending that this thing is completely solid when it comes to its construction. It is a well-crafted machine. From the wheels to the deck to the handlebars, it's all solid metal. And because it's solid, you're not going to worry about this thing falling over and breaking. Even the battery compartment underneath, I don't know if you can see it, but it actually has metal shielding it. So if you run over anything, it doesn't break the battery. It's very well built, solid construction, but that solid construction makes this thing heavy. It is heavy. You're not going to give this to your kid if you live down upstairs on the second story of your apartment building and say, hey, you guys go out and play and without needing to get off your butt and carry it for them. I know I do it every day. I don't mind, though. So things I like most about this scooter. Number one, my kids faces both when they're riding the scooter and when they're not riding the scooter, but thinking about riding the scooter, they light up. They really, really love it. And you know what it feels like when you get a gift that someone enjoys. It just makes you feel warm and fuzzy inside. And as a dad, I'm proud. Number two, the construction of this thing. It is built like a tank. You could throw it off the top of your house. And although the motor may not work, the frame's gonna be fine. Number three, it's powerful. It's powerful enough to go up to 15, maybe even 17 miles per hour. And the torque allows it to go off road so they can explore all over the place, not just on the road. And that gives you a lot of freedom as a kid to explore. And I don't know, I just, I'm impressed with that. It can even go up moderately small hills. I don't know how you judge the size of hills, but we've got hilly areas in our park that they ride on, no problem. Number four, it's electric. Now, while there are downsides with it being electric, such as the ride time, which we'll get to in a second, there's an upside, and that is that it's clean. It's cleaner for the environment, and it's cleaner for my house. This thing needs to be inside, and I'm glad that there's no oil drippings and all that jazz. And uh, it's pretty much plug and play. You charge it, turn it on, and go. Okay, things I don't like so much. Number one, the drive time. I wish it could drive all day long. I wish you never had to charge it. Obviously, both of these things are unrealistic. 
but I would love if it went for, you know, maybe two hours, that'd be cool. But I'm happy with the 45 minutes to an hour that they get. Number two, I wish you didn't have to charge it. I wish there was a way for it to basically pull energy from the vacuum of space using some type of zero point energy field grid, solar powered magnetic motor something or other. Uh, but you do have to charge it. I can live with that. And lastly, and probably my most serious critique, the seat and the handlebar should be height adjustable. Thankfully, we haven't had any problems with riding it because of that, but I was a little disappointed that the seat and the handlebars were not height adjustable. That's my one gripe that I feel like is legit. Razor, you need to get that fixed. But thankfully, it hasn't stopped our kids from enjoying it, and I don't think it'll stop yours either. Hey. Princess Diaries has been fulfilled. What do you think about your scooter? This is Matthew with shapechange.org. Enjoy your ride.